Did you know that if you own a 12900K, you're poor and you cannot compete in esports? The 13900K is the only competitive CPU on the market today. This is of course what the mainstream tech tubers would have you believe. Is it really true though? Okay, so today's scenario. Rewind back to 2021, whenever the 12900K came out, and uh, I don't, I don't even think uh, MDI was even out when this thing launched. But back then, DDR4 was vastly superior to the DDR5 that launched with Alder Lake, right? So if you're a longtime follower of mine, you would have picked up some DDR4, or if you already had some DDR4, you would have paired that with your 12900K, which was the correct decision at the time. Fast forward about two years now, we have 13900Ks, and now we have ADI going all the way to 8000. You're ready to upgrade now. This is kind of what you would have had back then when Alder Lake launched. This is like the MSI Z690P Pro or whatever. Uh, the cheapest DDR4, highest performing motherboard that you could have gotten. And then some HP B die, you know, the usual stuff. And then the 12900K. Affiliate links to all this stuff down below. Now the question is, let's say you have this set up right here. Do you buy a 13900K? and just slap it in and replace the 12900K and stick with DDR4? Or do you take the money that you would have spent on a 13900K and buy a DDR5 motherboard and DDR5 A die? In this scenario, we would be talking about the Z790i Edge, obviously ITX build, right? So the cost of a 13900K right now is about $575. And then the cost of a Z790i Edge and some A die is about $475. So about $100 cheaper to stick with your 12900K and go DDR5. Now the thought of that might make you cringe a little bit because it doesn't feel like an upgrade, right? 12 is lower than 13, thus must be slower, right? So that's the goal of today's video then. Where do you put your money? Do you put your money in a 13900K or a Z790 Edge and some A die? Which one is gonna be faster? Time for benchmarks. But first, this video was brought to you by the supporters of the channel. All products on this channel are tested and bought with supporter money. No corporate overlords, no sponsorships, and no samples. So all the information that you're getting on this channel is from a consumer to a consumer. So if you believe in the vision here at Frame Chasers, head on over to the website framechasers.org, become a supporter, help out the vision, and get access to the largest repository of cat pictures anywhere on the internet. Okay, so let's first start with the setups of both systems. On the left, we have the 12900K, like I was saying, on the Z790i Edge. The DDR5 is at 7800 C36. All cores locked to 5.3 gigahertz. Now, I did try and actually put this thing on an Apex to see if I could get 8000 megahertz, and I couldn't do it. So 7800 was the max for this memory controller. And then on the right, we have the 13900K. It's actually a 13900KS at a 5.7 gigahertz all core on the Z690P. 4133 C16. So the latency on both of these systems is basically the same, except the bandwidth on the 12900K is almost double. So the 13900K has about half the memory bandwidth, but it's also got 400 more megahertz on the core clock. Okay, so first we're going to get a baseline synthetic score here. I chose to use Fire Strike, and the 13900K is about 7% faster than the 12900K here, which actually correlates almost one for one exactly with the core speed increase. So what you're seeing here actually has very little to do with the memory bandwidth. Okay, first game of the day will be Shadow of the Tomb Raider. All three resolutions here on the graph and the 12900K with DDR5 is actually about 5% faster than the 13900K DDR4 in the 1% lows. In 4K, it doesn't really matter, but yeah, in the lower resolutions, having DDR5 is actually more beneficial than upgrading your CPU. 
Horizon Zero Dawn up next, and this one is more of a tie in all three of the resolutions, but in the 1% lows, again, the 12900K does squeeze out a 2% victory here. But even if you want to consider that margin of error, the DDR5 upgrade is actually getting you that same performance for less money here. It's interesting that you're already starting to see that clock speed doesn't really matter that much. Last of Us up next, I tried to throw this one in because it's extremely CPU heavy. So in 1440p and in 4K, they're both tied because we're GPU bound. But in 1080p, if you're playing this game in 1080p for some reason with, with this hardware, the 12900K does squeeze out a 3% victory here. Also, this goes without saying the graphics card used was a maxed out 4090, obviously. So this one is mostly a wash, but we have three victories for the 12900K, except for Fire Strike, obviously, so far. So very interesting results. So Civilization VI is up next here, and the 13900K does have a victory. Uh, the smaller number is better because it's time to complete the sequence. Which makes perfect sense. Why would memory bandwidth matter when it's the CPU calculating the AI tasks? Riftbreaker is up next. Now, this one had the complete opposite effect, where that DDR5 was scaling very, very nicely. So the 12900K is actually 10% faster than the 13900K here with DDR5. So right now, if you're on DDR4, there's no point in buying a 13900K before you actually upgrade to DDR5. This goes without saying, but let me make it clear. We're talking about very, very high speed A die. Not this, not any of this other crap. All right, up next is Spider Man Remastered with high ray tracing settings. And you can clearly see that this was a cherry picked benchmark here, but I really wanted to see this for myself. When you have ray tracing turned on, this game basically only cares about memory bandwidth. So that's why you're seeing the complete and utter destruction here. In 1440p, the 12900K is 27% faster. And even in 4K, it has a 7% lead. So I hope you, uh, I hope you, uh, DDR4 boys didn't buy, didn't go out and buy those, uh, 13900Ks. All right, last but not least, we got Warzone here. Now, at the time of recording Warzone, the FPS was broken, but I recorded both of these runs within 10 minutes of each other. So they're both equally broken, if you know what I mean. So the interesting thing here is actually the FPS on both of these systems is basically identical. And also the GPU usage on both of these systems is also basically identical. So I honestly don't know if these results are even valid or not. I'll have to retest it once the game is actually fixed. Because to me, it seems a bit too convenient that both of these numbers are literally almost identical on both of these systems. So it definitely feels like an engine bottleneck of some sort. So as of this moment, worst case scenario is a tie. Best case scenario, we don't know. But at least the 12900K is matching a 13900K here in the lows and in the averages. So if you actually choose to play this broken ass horrible game on the 12900K, hey, you're still competing. So if you're still hanging on to your 12900K, you are not actually poor, my friend. You are actually smart. You're competing at a higher level than the guy who bought the 13900K. So worst case scenario, they tied. Best case scenario, as with Spider-Man, the 12900K with maxed out DDR5 blows the DDR4 platform completely out of the water. And if you're lucky enough to have a super old 12900K, you still get AVX512 too. So I will leave affiliate links to all this stuff down below, but don't go and buy DDR4 stuff anymore. It's basically obsolete now. With the Z790i Edge and ADI being so cheap now, you might as well just go and buy that stuff, trust me. And this video also applies to the 12700K as well. You can go pick that thing up for $220 right now. You still stick that thing on the edge with DDR5 and you have a platform that will last you many, many generations. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this video valuable and you learned something. 
DDR5 greater than 13th gen. And if you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below whether you went the DDR4 13th gen path or the 12th gen DDR5 path. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.